What's up guys, Hobbo88 here and welcome back to iRacing and it's build day. Build day means new content and this time around the new content is the new Super Dirt Car Big Block Modified and the 358 Modified both finally releasing on the iRacing platform. Now I'm so excited for this guys and I have been for a long time. Anyone who watches my channel knows that I have spent uh, a lot of time racing R-Factor in these cars and I love them. They're my favorite cars over on that platform. So I've been waiting and waiting for them to come out on iRacing and today is finally the day. So in this video, we're gonna go ahead and check out both the 358 modified and the big block modified and we're going to switch around between the two of them and check them at every dirt track on iRacing so it's going to be a big video guys it's going to be a lot of fun i cannot wait to check these things out to see what they're like and i hope you guys enjoy the ride the way we're going to do this is we're going to work backwards to forwards alphabetically uh we're going to go through and start at the bottom of the alphabet and work our way back to cedar lake to finish the new track so we're going to start makes sense we're going to start here at weed sport the track that is synonymous with big block modifieds and then we're going to work our way to the new track at cedar lake guys if you want to make sure you check out the description because i will include timestamps for each of the different tracks if you want to just skip ahead and at the end of the video i'll wrap it all up with a little bit of an impressions uh and thoughts section at the very end of the video but uh that's just about it we're going to go ahead and move on but before we do don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you uh enjoyed the video guys it means a lot to me and it makes a big difference so without any further ado let's go ahead and check out the garage section for the car before we move on to cutting laps all right so let's have a quick look at the garage i normally don't include this in these videos but there are lots of people who watch these that don't actually own iRacing racing and often ask how the setups and things work so here is a full look at the setup section for these cars We've currently got the 358 modified loaded, but this I believe should be basically all the same as the big block, except for perhaps a few of the adjustments, but all of uh, the values I should say, but all the adjustments should be about the same. Here on the tire section, all makes sense. We've got tire pressures and stagger front and rear. That's all uh, pretty standard sort of stuff. But if we have a look in the garage section for the chassis, which includes basically everything else, uh, rock screen, we must have the rock screen turned on. Uh, your steering box ratio, pit arm length, um, steering offset toe in and your brake pressure bias on the front so that's your front to rear brake pressure and also if you want the uh, right front brake connected um, that's on the front of the car and if we go all the way to the back uh, you've got the fuel and then I'm trying to see through my wheel uh, the axle J bar height the deck height, the axle lead and the final drive ratio there in the back but then in between everywhere else uh, here's your shocker settings and things like that for all four corners of the car. On the fronts, your perch offsets, your, offset, your spring rates, your stiffness on your bump and rebound, camber caster and your wheel spacing. That stuff's all pretty straightforward if you're into setting up dirt cars. And then on the rear, it's all the same sort of stuff, but we also have uh, the trailing arm. And on the left rear, we'll have the droop chain and the chassis J-bar height as well. So that's the full range of adjustments for these cars. Uh, like I said, they'll vary a little bit between the 358 and the big block, probably some of the values, but otherwise it should be the same. Um, and that's just a quick look at what you can adjust in there. I'm not messing with setups today. I'm going to run all baseline sets across the whole video for each track. So you can see I've already got the Weed Sports setup loaded here for Weed Sports. So let's go, guys. Let's get stuck straight into it. All right, guys. So here we go. Um, I'm yet to turn a lap in either of the cars, so this is all straight straight up new for me. Um, rock screen on. I actually don't know that I like the rock screen in this car. I'm not going to lie. It uh, looks difficult to see through. Um, but we'll see how we go. So anyway, this is the 358 um, version of the car. So we'll give it a run here at Weed Sport. All of the... Uh, all of the setups for this is all just going to be the iRacing default sets. Oh, we hooked it in way too hard. Oh, now I haven't got tear off buttons mapped. That was much nicer. Let's 
So like I mentioned already in the video, Weed Sport uh, definitely, I think, of all the tracks on iRacing, this is the one that you probably would consider big blocks and the 358 modifieds to be most suited to, not necessarily suited to, but the track in the sim that you'd expect these cars to race at in real life. starting to get a bit of a feel for them. Now, typically, I'm not a fan of the uh, lower-powered versions of cars in the sim, so normally, um, I don't like the, the limited late models. The pro late models are not too bad. Um, I don't like the 305 sprint cars. But... Um, I'm interested in the 358s as a class. I know they're a lower power, and I'm probably going to like the big blocks a lot more, but... Um, although I can feel like it's struggling for power a little bit off the corner, and if you get too sideways like that, it really bogs down and chugs a bit. That's the nature of these types of cars, but... 358 Modified Racing is something that I'm interested in doing, so... I'm glad that they actually feel reasonably powerful and powerful enough that you're actually going to be able to sort of race them. Um, all, all the tracks as well, guys, in this video, I'm going to run at 30% track state. We're currently in the morning time of day here for this one. We'll adjust that throughout from track to track, but we're going to run 30% track state for all the, all the laps that we do. All right. I think that's probably about enough here for the 358 at Weed Sport. We don't have long here at each track because to get through everything, it's going to take us a while. So let's take a look at the replay of that, guys, uh, and then we'll come back next. Uh, I think Williams Grove will be the next uh, the next track that I want to go to, um, and we'll do that next in the big block. All right, guys, here we go. So, big block, uh, Williams Grove, and I've left the uh, rock screen off. So, basically, I'll leave the rock screen on in the 358 modified, off in the big blocks. You'll be able to tell them apart easily that way. Um, and I like the fact that I can see, actually. I actually probably prefer the rock screen off in these cars, which will be the first time that that's happened. I always tend to run the rock screen on, as you guys know. Anyone who watches my... Stuff would know. Alright, let's see what these things are like. I do lo <laughs> love that I can see the uh, the front wheels. I know you guys probably can only see the right front because my big fat head's in the way on the left-hand side, but I do really like that.
I should point out as well, guys, I always use the default um, seat position in iRacing for all the cars. I don't move the seat around car to car. But I do feel like I'm sitting quite high. Um, like I can't see any of the dash or anything. Which is not unlike uh, R-Factor. I find the same thing in R-Factor. The seat position feels really weird in these cars. So it may be something I look to change in the future. So even the big block um, struggles a little bit for that low-end power, which I'm a little surprised about. It's good if you can keep the momentum up, but it struggles a little bit. As far as uh, how much of a drama that is, I mean, the paperclip shaped tracks, it will be more noticeable. So here at Williams Grove, um, USA Speedway as well would be another one. Now I should point out as well, guys, because I'm sure someone's going to say something about this in the comments. Um, I said at the start of the video that I wanted to do these um, alphabetically in reverse. I do realize, guys, that Weed Sport should therefore not be the first video. Williams Grove should have been first. But I wanted to start with Weed Sport because that's the, uh, the track that's so synonymous with this type of racing. From here on out, we will be doing them in alphabetical order. Try and run a little bit lower line here for a... That's not really lower, is it? That's right through the slick. Although that worked out alright. Alright, now before I talk about uh, the way that they drive and handle and stuff, I want to run them at a couple of different tracks. So I'm not going to talk too much about that just yet. But what I will do here is just this next lap and then that'll do. But um, what I'm going to do is next track will be Volusia. So I'm actually going to go ahead and run the big block again instead of the 358. In fact, we'll probably use the big block for most of the tracks, but um, we will come back in the big block again next at Volusia. So let's take a look at the replay here of a couple of laps around Williams Grove and uh, we'll be back in just a minute to have a look at the car at Volusia.
But here we go, we're back. Volusia. A little bit different track uh, to Williams Grove, which is why I wanted to run the big block back to back. Get a bit of a feel for his characteristics. You'll notice as well that the time of day is moving. We were in the morning to start with when we were at Weed Sport. Moved to noon at Williams Grove and now uh, in the afternoon. such a fast race track but we're not here to talk about the tracks oh <laughs> We just touched, just touched the wall on the inside of turn three there. At 30% track state, really, the fast way is just to go around the top. It'll be the same at every track, probably. So the thing that has surprised me the most is, um, I think, I believe, uh, I believe this has a larger engine distribution than even a super modifier, uh, super, a super late model, sorry. Um, I think a super late model's got a 438 cubic inch engine, and if I'm not wrong, I think this is bigger than that. I think it's like a 467 or something. But it certainly does feel like it struggles to pull off the turns a bit more. Um, I'm not sure what the weight is like. I might compare that between now and when I get in uh, in the car next. But um, maybe it's heavier, I'm not sure. But it definitely doesn't feel like it's as powerful uh, as a Super Late model. And it even struggles a little bit to pull off the corners in those tighter turns. And when you get it very sideways, uh, it's prone to sort of chugging down a bit, struggling. And that's in the um, the big block, let alone uh, what it's like in the 358 with less power. So that's interesting. I didn't didn't expect that. And also, after having seen the car cut laps at um, Williams Grove, which is a track that I would have expected to see it, the body roll on the car is a lot less than I was expecting, and I'm basing that off my experience with R-Factor. It doesn't carry the left front wheel like I thought it would. Um, and that's just on the, the baseline setups, but I was expecting it to try and carry the left front a lot more. You can certainly still see the car's attitude looks correct. It does look quite soft, but it doesn't actually lift the wheel like I thought it might at somewhere like Williams Grove. Anyway, guys, let's take a quick look at uh, a couple of laps here on the replay at Volusia. And uh, next we've got USA Speedway, the dirt uh, configuration over there. And I'm going to go back to the 358 Modifieds because that's another paperclip shaped track. I want to see how the car goes uh, coming off the tighter corners there. So that'll be next, guys. Don't go anywhere.
So here we go. Lakeland, USA Speedway. Uh, we're now in the late afternoon. Still 30% track state, and we're back in the 358 modified, as I said. Now, I'm interested to see how this car goes with a little bit less power. Trying to pull off the corners a little bit. So you got these tight... Um, it's like a Martinsville sort of a, a layout, this track. Long straights that you got to sort of slow down for the corners a bit. It's a very paperclip sort of shape. And then you've got fairly tight corners and long straights after them. So you have to gear the car to cater for the end of the straight. Which means it's susceptible to struggling uh, with its corner exit power and a lower powered vehicle. And it is, it is chugging a little bit. It is struggling to pull a little bit off the corners even though we're running the higher groove on the track. You can hear it laboring a little bit, which is what I expected. And honestly, I actually expected it to be a lot worse. And just quickly as well, we've got the rock screen back up. And now having driven with and without the rock screen, I definitely feel like I prefer the rock screen on. I know that triggers a lot of you guys. I know you hate it. So many of you don't like the rock screen. <laughs> but now that I've tried both, I can confirm I do prefer the rock screen. After initially when I jumped in the car, I felt like it was a bit overwhelming. Now I 100% do prefer it. Also, while I was loading in between uh, between tracks, guys, I had a quick look to see what the weight uh, difference was like between a super late model and a big block modified. A super late model is a few hundred pounds lighter, but uh, not as much as I was expecting, given, given how the performance difference feels. So, interesting. You guys, I'm sure, will have filled me in in the comments already by now that I got everything wrong when it came to engine size and performance and things like that, I'm sure. Because to me, it doesn't make a lot of sense that it has more power. It doesn't weigh a lot more, but it does feel like it struggles to come off the turns a bit compared to the Super Late model. The big block, that is. I'm sure you guys have got a very good reason for that, an explanation that you've already posted into the comments. Or maybe, maybe there isn't an explanation. Maybe it's just a bit strange. Certainly unexpected for me, anyway. Try and tippy toe around the bottom line here for a couple of quick laps I have to admit I'm not a huge fan of this particular track I do enjoy it in its paved configuration for like uh, paved street stock racing and things like that not a huge fan of it as a dirt uh, a dirt layout and for those that are new this is no longer an existing racetrack Lakeland or USA International in Florida no longer exists in real life in case you're wondering I'm imp I'm actually impressed I feel like the 358 manages better than I thought it would especially now that I'm trying to run the lower line you got to let out of the throttle a lot more slower through the corners. It still drives pretty well up off the turn. Much better than I was expecting. In some ways, I kind of prefer the feel of the 358 to drive over the big block, which is very surprising. I don't know about that yet. I don't know. Alright, let's rip the top around one more time and then we'll back it into the lane. Now, the next track that we're going to go to, which uh, may seem right or wrong to some of you, depending on how you look at it, is uh, Char uh, not Charlotte. Although the dirt track, as it's called in iRacing, would be the next in alphabetical order. I want to go with that as Charlotte, so it'll be late. In fact, probably the second last track we go to. So next, we're going to come back at Lima Land. We're going to go back to the big block there and run on one of the shorter tracks. So that'll be interesting. We'll see what that's like, and we'll be back for that right after this.
Back into the big blocks. Alright, here we go. Our first real taste of a shorter track in the big block. I'm going to be interested to see what this feels like. Because now we should really get some wheel spin. Because the gearing should be uh, much taller here, or short, shorter. How do you want to, how do you, however you want to word it. Because we don't have any long straights to have it geared for. Now working in towards sunset for the time of day. Still 30% track state, like I said at the top of the video. That'll be the same for all the tracks. And back to having no rock screen. And again, now that I'm back in this car with no rock screen, I... I'm even more certain that I prefer to have it turned on. But we'll leave it for the rest of it, the rest of this video. It does feel a bit more lively on the shorter track. I'll give it that. But uh, even with that being said, what I'm finding, uh, the more and more as the laps wind on here across the different tracks, is that this car is, what's the right word? Um, I would say docile. As far as a tin top goes on the dirt, I mean, the street stock is docile because it doesn't have a lot of power. The UMP Modified is a car that you drive extremely sideways. It's always trying to get away from you. Um, the way you drive that car is really on the right front. And the car's always cranked out sideways. The Super Late model's much the same. This car feels a lot safer. And this car feels a lot more like Honestly, feels a lot more like what I'd expect a dirt car to feel like. Alright. That's probably enough laps though. Shorter track, so... Not quite as long, but we did get plenty of laps in here. I think that I've seen enough, but... So let's move on to the next one, which is one that I'm really looking forward to. And that's Lernerville. And we're going to take the big block there as well. So let's, uh, let's take a look at the replay here and move on to that next. So this is a combination that I've been looking forward to trying. There's a, there's a handful of combinations along the way here that I've been looking forward to. And this is one of them in particular. 
Oh my god, it's so bouncy and bumpy in the pit area. <laughs> Lernerville. One of my favourite tracks. Becoming one of my favourite tracks to drive on in iRacing. We are still in the big block, like I said. And as I've mentioned a couple of times already, it's just the iRacing default setup for this track. The only thing we've changed in any of the setups for the whole the whole video is the rock screen. Which we've got turned on in the uh, 358s. Not gonna lie, hitting the cushion around this track is pretty rewarding. And on these shorter tracks, as the tracks get shorter, the issue that I was talking about, well, it's not an issue, but the, what I was talking about earlier on on some of the longer tracks, like Williams Grove, um, pulling up off the corner is not so much of a big deal because of the gear in the car. I'm not really noticing at all here. Running the bottom around here is somewhere else that I expected that you might sort of find that a car has trouble pulling up off the corners, but not to be. How long till we jump this cushion, eh? <laughs> there it is. Struggles to pull up again once you get a little too sideways. The motor kind of labours up a bit. So it seems like these cars in general will be real momentum cars. You don't want to have to check up too much in these things because it's going to hurt you a lot. But the more and more laps that I put into them, the more I'm convinced that these drive more like I would expect a car like this to drive. They definitely feel like they drive on the right rear more than, say, the UMP or even the super late model to an extent. That feel to me like they pivot off the right front wheel. This feels more like it drives off the right rear. It's kind of hard to explain. Some of you probably understand what I'm trying to say. Some of you probably think I sound like a dork. But to me, it makes sense. And on that note as well, we're going to back it up and we're moving back to the 358, uh, 358 for the next track, which is another one that I'm hugely looking forward to and one of my favorites to race on. And that is Lanier, and we'll be back for that next.
I love this track. I, this is always still one of my favorites. The racing here is always good. And to me, this feels, even though it's much bigger, it feels most like my uh, my local track. As someone who's a spectator, anyway, this is what I feel like. Is most like my local track, a Premier Speedway. We're back in the 358s. Now this is the first track where I'm kind of feeling like the 358 is underpowered, like noticeably. It's not so bad when you're running the bottom. It's quite strange, it's the opposite to what I would have expected. It's like I prefer the, the 358 on the bigger tracks, the big block on the smaller tracks. I would have thought it would be the other way around. And this one lies somewhere in the middle. It's a smaller track, it drives like a bigger one. In a lot of ways. It's so cool that you can see that. Particularly that right front tire working left and right I do really like that this is one thing I haven't really talked about yet aesthetically the cars they look so good I love the big blocks I know a lot of people don't like them they think they look funny same with the UMPs for a lot of people they don't like those either I love modifieds I think they look amazing and watching the replays while I'm recording them for you guys I just I could sit and watch them all day I love it which is funny because I think that the uh, the pavement mo modifieds uh, the oval modifieds I hate them <laughs> I think they look ridiculous isn't that funny I love this track. We're still at 30%. We're back into the day. It's now morning time again, so test day number two, let's call it that. What a great job this would be, just traveling the country, trialing uh, cars at different tracks. Jump in a plane and head to the next track. Doing them alphabetically wouldn't be the smartest way to do that though, would it? Let's go right up to the top. Three fifty eight, actually, that feels pretty good up on the top. car sort of gets right up you can drive it right up into the corner but it it doesn't get to the fence sort of just drives off the corner really nice I like it I like it you guys <laughs> all right let's park it up the next one is uh Kokomo I'm actually going to go there in the uh 358s as well now because I want to see what uh these things are like on another one of the smaller tracks just as a comparison because we just did Lima land in the big block. So let's uh let's go see what that looks like next, guys.
Now I'm I'm really interested about this combination. Um I'm, I just want to see what these 358s are like here on the shorter track. Because the big block at Lima Land is exceptional. They're just so smooth. I love it. I don't know, you guys. I <laughs> I go backwards and forwards. I drive the big block at a track, and I think, yep, nah, I like this. And then I go back to the 358 at the next track, and I think, nah, nah, this is better. And I go back to the big block again, and I'm like, nah, this is definitely better. I can't make up my mind. They're just both... They drive so well. I mean, Kokomo is not an easy track. But I can just, I can position the car exactly where I want it. It's more predictable. I just love it. I just love it. Alright. Let's have a look at the replay of that, guys. I love it. I love it. Let's uh, let's go... Uh, after this, we're going to go ahead and... Uh, check out Knoxville. Uh, we're going to go back to the big block for that. Um, and that should be interesting. I'm interested to see what that combination feels like. So big blocks at Knoxville right after this. Knoxville guys I I don't really know what to expect from this I I can't really imagine a big block racing at Knoxville to be honest but I feel like this could be one of the sleeper really good combinations
And one lap in and I love it. I love it. I still can't get over the being able to see the wheel, like the the actual front wheel down there and the particularly on the right hand side as you go through the corners. I feel like I'm a GoPro. Like it feels like a GoPro shot of a front tire on like a sprint car or something. We're now back into the afternoon as well. Still 30% track state like we have been the whole time. You can just drive them so consistently. I'm, try I'm trying to think about like a UMP or a, even a late model down here, trying to run the bottom. The car would be like stepped way out sideways trying to get the thing to turn in. You're forever chasing it, like it feels like the rear is trying to get away from you. These things just feel stable. They feel stable. And they're smooth. You can just put them where you want them. They should make for some really good racing because they're very drivable. Hopefully people aren't spuds when they're racing these things and they can actually hold a nice line. Not be too sporadic. I think that's probably enough let's check out the replay guys and next we're going to go to february so uh, i'll keep the uh, big blocks for that we'll stick with the high pad we've done we've just done a smaller track with the 358 so we'll stick with the big blocks here at february see what that's all about right after this Alright, 
fells. February. This is gonna be interesting. This is one of those racetracks that's really elbows out, if that makes sense. It's a rough and ready sort of a track. It's bumpy. The walls are awkward around here. They reach out and grab you, the cedar block walls. It's got lots of banking. It's wide. Slide jobs, bumps. And honestly, it's got more character than a lot of the other tracks in iRacing. And I feel like that's going to suit these cars. So far, this is great. This is the sort of track that I can kind of imagine these cars racing on. I don't know. I don't think that they race here in real life. I don't know, actually, about that. Someone will be able to tell me. Um, but this is the sort of racetrack I can imagine them racing on. It's a track with a lot of character. Ooh! How's the... How is the bumps? Low side of three. All the bumps. The car, because it's soft and it's sprung softly. Just sort of bounced and lurched its way through. I like that. That feels nice. Not fast, I'm sure, but it does feel cool. I love that. I don't know a lot about February as an actual venue. I'm sure that this is a very good facility. I have no reason to suspect otherwise, really. But this feels like more of a regional, like a rural country town sort of a track, which I know a few of them are in iRacing even. But this is the sort of track that I feel like these type of cars would race on. Less of the AAA all-star big name facilities, your Eldoras and your Knoxvilles, places like that. This is the sort of track I imagine these cars racing on. Smaller town, sort of rough and ready. The cedar block wall, I think, is what does it. I think that's what makes it feel like that. And I don't mean that with any disrespect to either the super dirt cars or big blocks or February itself. Often it's these sort of tracks I feel like have got the best racing. I'd love to see more of the Northeast tracks actually, because you guys know that I've done a lot of R-Factor racing. I've done a lot of the tracks in the Northeast on R-Factor and they're so much fun. Starting to really wind it up now. Oh, over-rotate. Got too excited. <laughs> yes. Lots of yes. All right, I need to stop. I'm having too much fun. We need to stop. We need to stop. On the subject of first-class facilities, we're off to uh, Eldora next, guys. So let's go check that out and see what that's like in the 358s, I think, actually. We'll do that next.
We're starting to descend into the night now. Sunset time at Aldora. Now 358 modified. I mean... I'm not quite sure what to expect from this. Because for me... This is a combination that I just... It doesn't... It's not a combination that I think I'll like, honestly. And I'm, I'm always open to be surprised, pleasantly surprised, and often I am. But I just don't see these types of cars racing on this type of track. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Bit of high line, bit of low line. Bit of middle line. So the, the 358s have been interesting for me because some tracks, I've really liked them. This track, they don't feel powerful enough. I'm just holding it flat and I don't like flat, flat foot racing. It feels to me like it's a, a limited late model or a 305 sprint or something. It feels underpowered for the track. Now a big block may be better. But this does feel underpowered around here for me. Try and carry all the momentum around the top. And we're right up against the wall. I will say, because I've already talked about it, and I'll say it again now, they're very drivable. I mean, right on the fence at Eldora, it's pretty easy to get the wall. And I'm not saying I'm not going to, because I probably will right now as I'm saying it, but I'm able to get right up against it and just put the car where I want it. I mean, that's right against the wall. Right against it. And it just does it, at will. I like that. I like a car that's predictable. It's not trying to kill me. The big block may be a little bit different story up on the fence here at Eldora, but at least in this car, in the 358, it just drives where I wanted to go. A little bit of a rub there that time. As we came from the bottom of the track to the top. It's about what I expected, let's put it like that. I, I just don't know that I will be excited to race this style of car around this track. I just don't... It doesn't do a lot for me. But that's just me. It certainly drives well. I am interested though to see what happens at the next track because it is a track these things race at in real life. And it's, I'm going to go back to the big block and we're going to go to Charlotte. The dirt track, the dirt track in Charlotte. Uh, world Finals time, guys. That's what it's going to be here in the next one. Night time.
the dirt track. Now, you know, you know what I, just quickly, you know what I, I realised that I screwed up here was that we're going in alphabetical order, descending alphabetically. I screwed up. This shouldn't be the track that we're on at the minute. It should be the Chili Bowl. Alphabetically, that would make more sense. But, uh, we've done a goof. That's alright, we'll go there next. And I really don't mind because this is one of the combinations I'm very, very interested in trying out. Um, Charlotte, a track that I don't especially have any affinity for. It's not a track that I'm always looking forward to racing on in the other cars. In fact, when Charlotte was released in iRacing at the time, this was probably my least favourite track of the lot. Um, initially I, I didn't race well here, I didn't like the way that the track progressed throughout a night, I found that it was too bumpy, but nowadays I actually enjoy racing here a lot, and I'm not really sure why or what changed, but all that aside, it's a combination that I've been really looking forward to trying out tonight, because there's some relatability. This is a track on the iRacing servers that I have seen Big Blocks race on before. Not in person, but I have seen it before. Obviously, most of us would have. If you're into your dirt track racing, you've probably watched the World Finals here at the dirt track. And most people are probably more interested in the sprint cars or the late models, but I really enjoyed the World Finals because it was my first ever chance to watch the Super Dirt Car Series. I'd never seen the Super Dirt Car Series before until I saw it at uh, the World Finals, until I saw these cars racing at the World Finals several years ago. Um, I don't even remember what it was that I watched it on. It was probably the Cushion or something like that back in those days when I used to watch videos over there. And it was my exposure to these. It was the first time I'd ever seen a race with Peter Britton in it, uh, for example. So, I've watched plenty of racing in the big blocks nowadays. I've watched it at a lot of, uh, I watched a lot of the replays on Dirt Vision and stuff across the the northeast, and I have seen lots of racing in these cars now. But for me, it's this track that was my first taste of what they're all about. So there's some relatability. There's a chance for me to sort of see how these cars drive here at a track that I've seen them drive on in real life. Whereas for something like sprint cars and late models, there's plenty of other tracks on the service that I would rather watch sprint cars and late models on, so... I think that's why. I think this is the car that I feel like, for me, will be the Charlotte car, the car that I enjoy most at this track. And I have to say, it drives really nicely. I'm not surprised. I have started to notice though as we get more into this video as we get further through the combinations the cars and the tracks i'm starting to really appreciate the difference between the 358 and the big block this has a lot more power than the 358 initially in the first couple of videos or well, sorry the first couple of uh tracks that we we were driving on uh, the difference didn't seem that great considering the huge power performance difference between the two the on-track handling and performance didn't feel like it was that big of a gap, but now I I can see the wrongs in my ways from back there because this car has got a lot of power and I really feel it on this track in particular. Especially given how at Aldora where we just were, the 358 felt extremely underpowered. Here, the big block feels pretty tasty. And what I love about it is, despite all the power and the difference that it does have between this and the 358, I can still drive it where I want it. I can say, I want to hit the bottom. And I can drive it to the bottom. And it doesn't try and spin out on me or do something unexpected. It's, it's trustworthy. You can trust that it's going to do what you want it to do. And I like that. But anyway, that's enough laps around here. We'll run the replay and uh, then we're going to come back 
at the Chili Bowl, and I think we'll go back to the uh, 358 for that, so don't go anywhere. All right, so this is like, for me, including a truck in my track preview videos. It's the outlier, but if I don't include it, you guys will rage. I can't imagine a car like this ever racing at the Chili Bowl. Just like I can't really imagine trucks racing at somewhere like um, Weed Sport or something, for example, but you guys require that I include all the dirt tracks with all the dirt cars whenever I do these sorts of videos. So here we are. Let's see if we can wheel the 358 modified around here. Ooh. That lack of power. Rearing its ugly head. Now, I'll be the first to admit, I haven't done much racing at the Chili Bowl on iRacing, which is ultimately extremely disappointing because I love the Chili Bowl especially. Um, but the Tulsa Shootout and everything, I, I love all this stuff. And I wish that I could do more racing here, but all the racing I have done here has been honestly pretty garbage. I feel like you'd have cars crashing into each other if we raced on the centripetal circuit, let alone something like this. Um, but that said, a lot of people do race a lot here on the Chili Bowl, and a lot of people do race around here in things like late models and stuff like that. I know they do. I've seen plenty of it. I've just never done much of it myself. And I kind of, I kind of really like that, actually. The idea of racing these sort of cars around here is cool. But you really got to find the right group of people to do it with, I think. This car really just doesn't quite have the power needed to run around the bottom. That wasn't too bad, but we had the right rear and the slick. Well, we kind of got it to work there. I don't know, we're getting it, we're getting it. This is obviously a very unique sort of a circuit to try and drive around. Clunk the wall. I'm not gonna lie, it was actually pretty good fun. <laughs> At the start there, I was sort of saying this is like the token have to do it because I have to do it combination. I'm glad I did. 
But that is probably enough for the chili bowl. I think we've probably done enough laps now to know what it's all about. So that brings us to what will be the last preview of this video. And you guys know it. It's Cedar Lake. The brand new track on iRacing. We're going to wrap up with that right after this. Well, here it is, guys. This is it. This is Cedar Lake. The brand new track here on iRacing, and this is my very first time rolling out of this track at all. First time looking at it. So this is a bit unusual. Normally, uh, normally I would be doing a video where I preview all the dirt cars here first, but this time we're doing the big blocks first. So we, uh, we will be doing a separate video where we talk about this track itself and look at all the cars around here and that will be up after this one on youtube so make sure you check back in to tune into that and i'll give you all my thoughts about cedar lake but we're going to get our first taste of it here in the big block and it's a bit different for me because i've got no real way of having any reference for this track now because i haven't ever driven it before so i've got no idea what the car's like relative to other cars i've got no idea what the lines are like what we should be and shouldn't be running Apart from my experience of watching racing here on Dirt Vision, things of that nature. So I'm going to try and avoid going into too much detail about the track itself and what my thoughts about that are, because that's for another video. What I will say though is that it's got lots of bumps there, especially on the entry to, well, what, I don't even know what, which side of the track is the front? <laughs> Where's the start line? This might be the, I'm trying to remember where the pits are. Here's your start line right here. About to come under it. So this is turn one. There's a few bumps on the entry to turn one, but it's turn three down here that there's a lot of bumps. You can sort of see the track where, where it's, Got rubber going into the slick. And it reminds me a little bit of what we were talking about before with the bumps at uh, Fairbury. The cars just track through the bumps really nicely because of the soft nature of them. They sort of just float through there. But it's more tactile than I feel like in, than in most of the other cars. They don't... A lot of the other cars, you don't either don't notice it or... They're just ultra violent or not really anywhere in the middle. These are nice. You sort of notice the bumps, but they don't unsettle the car, which I really like. Let's have a look at a few different lines, see if we can get around the bottom. I mean, I say that like this is my first look at the track, so I don't know how to run any other lines, but oh no. That was awkward. Wow, didn't it ride the wall? Now it's saying that we uh, meatballed the car, but it does it does still feel fine, so we'll keep pressing on.
We almost got through the whole video without running into anything, guys. Almost. Sailed in a little bit hard there into turn three. And again, although very, very catchable. I'm just getting lost here, just enjoying myself. I realise I haven't talked for about 20 laps. I'm just sitting here driving, and it is great fun to do just that. All right, guys, let's watch the replay uh, of some of those laps right there, and then we'll come back after that and wrap up with a little bit of an impressions uh, summary of what I think about the new cars. All right, guys, let's wrap this all up. And what better way to do that than with, in the background, having a few laps of the big block at Weed Sport. We crank the track state up to 50% and rip some laps. Now, while that's going on in the background, I'm just going to quickly talk about what do I think about these cars? What are my impressions? Uh, what do I think of them? And a few quick uh, little thoughts that I have. Firstly, the big question, are they good? Yes, they are extremely good. They're extremely good. Uh... As you guys know, I have an affinity with these cars in R-Factor. If you watch my channel for a long time, you'll know that I've always loved the big block modifieds on R-Factor. They've been my favorite cars to drive. So I was very, very excited to see them coming to iRacing and was hopeful that they'd be even half as good. And I can confirm for you that they are. Uh, what do I like about them? I mean, I just love how they're so drivable. They feel to me different to any of the other tin tops uh, that are in iRacing in the way that they drive and whether it's realistic, whether it's not I don't know, I can't say one way or another but what I like about them is that it feels like they drive off the right rear of the car so a late model and a UMP modified in particular, I feel like they pivot off the nose, they drive off the right front tyre a lot uh, you get into the corner, they're very sideways and they drive off of the right front tyre, this it feels like you pitch the car at the corner, they feel heavy you pitch the car at the corner, you get it into a slide, and then you drive with the right rear tire. That's what it feels like. It feels like you're driving off the right rear tire through the corners and off the exit of the turn. Now for me, that's what a race car should feel like. That's what I think that they should feel like. That's how I feel like 
they should feel like. Of course, I don't have any experience in real life, so I cannot speak to that as whether or not that's realistic. But for me, in my mind, that's how I imagine it. It feels like you're driving the car off the right rear tyre through the corner, and I just love that. It feels, in a lot of ways, a lot like they feel in R Factor, which is where I've turned so many laps in them. They feel slightly more rigid. They don't feel quite so soft which watching the replays back like we are right now on screen, I actually think it's more realistic this way. I think that the the big blocks in R Factor are just a little bit too soft. Um, these feel like a good balance. What I like about them so much is how easy they are to drive. They just, they you point them where you want them and they go there. They're hopefully going to therefore provide really good racing because I think that people should be able to drive these cars fairly consistently. They should be able to pick their line and drive it well. It shouldn't be all over the place and hopefully it means that we get some really good racing out of these cars that's what i'm hoping for anyway and i think that that's what it will be but i mean only time will tell the 358 i think the more i've done laps now in the two different cars i think the 358 is starting to lean to me towards like a pro late model to a super late model now that's not to say it's a bad thing um Initially, I felt like I was enjoying maybe the 358s a little more. I think now that I've done a few more laps though, the bigger power, the big block, I think is where it's at for me. That's where my preference lies. The 358s though, however, are very good. I actually enjoy racing pro late models. So um, if the 358 winds out to be something similar to that, I'd be very, very happy. They feel like they've got just enough power just enough but it depends on the track there will be certain tracks that i think it will not be powerful enough for but uh the only one that really stood out to me from those was eldora that it really struggled at uh the others that i drove the 358 on all felt really good so that's that's promising and hopefully we get some really good racing in the 358s as well so time will tell whether or not that's how it all pans out but that's how i feel about it here that's my impressions overall i racing i tip my hat you've done a great job and uh, I think that the cars are going to be received well. I think everyone will enjoy them and I 100% recommend that you get them if you're on the fence. If you are at all interested in this type of racing, I think that uh, you'll be very pleasantly surprised or just very pleasantly uh, it will reach your expectations. I don't think that it lets you down in any way. So that's going to be it, guys, for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Hobbo88. Check out uh, twitch.tv forward slash Hobbo88 as well for the live streams. There is a Discord link in the description below. Make sure that you uh, go and become a part of the Hobbo88 community over there. We've got a pretty good legion of fans in the Discord these days. And of course, like I mentioned at the top of the video, don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube if you haven't done so already and hit the like button on the video as well if you enjoyed it that all makes a big difference for me but that's it for this video thanks for watching i hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one